Hi, girls. Hi. Hello. Well, Pravana is here with Bottle Blonde 76, also known as Sam Bailey, and we're talking today about Pravana Jewel Tones, Vivid Jewel Tones. So, why don't you tell them what we're going to learn today? Okay, so um, I was really excited to find out that Pravana was coming out with Jewel Tones. I, I'm really like a vivid, vivid artist. Like, I really like bright, bright colors. And I know that the way things are kind of going right now is a little bit more pastel, a little bit more like the grays and blendings and stuff. So when I heard that something like really deep and bold and fresh was coming out, I was like, that's for me. So they sent me um, a box and they said, see what you can come up with. And I was like, hmm, okay, cool tones. Let's make some jewels. So what I decided to do, this is Erin by the way, she is at uh, the Punk Pixie Chick on, <laughs> Sorry, um, on Instagram. Um, you probably see her all over my Instagram. But So what I decided to do was do some hair carving on Erin um, and do like some diamonds and jewels and incorporate all the jewel tones in with it. Um, a while ago, I mean when I first started my Instagram, I started with Pravana, um, using just Pravana because it was the best, of course, um, and I was doing a lot of long hair, but I felt like I wasn't really being true to myself because my clientele is mostly short hair clients, and I thought, I'm leaving them out. Like, I just thought, oh, I could just throw one color on them, or, you know, maybe two, like, because their hair is so short. What can I do to make them happy, vivid clients? So I started to get into hair carving, um, teaching myself little by little. I've actually now hired, uh, or I do an exchange with a barber who's showing me how to do um, uh, carving, and, and I, I was going to pay him, but he actually ended up wanting to learn how to do vivids, which was really cool. So we do a trade, I'm actually, we're, we're gonna um, help each other out tomorrow. Um, but so what I did with this, was I took um, the three new colors. There's amethyst, there's blue topaz, and there is emerald. Um, emerald being my favorite, personally. But um, what I like to do when I'm doing the hair carving and painting it, I at first I thought I have to learn how to fade hair. Like that's the only way I'm going to be able to do hair carving. But it turned out to do vivids on carved hair, you actually need some hair. Um, and you can do the shading with the coloring. So what I did with this was I started at the bottom and I actually mixed the blue topaz with clear and a little bit, I did use a little bit of the pastel blissful blue just to get that lighter color at the bottom and move it up into the blue topaz. Then what I did was I overlapped it a little bit with the emerald brought it up into the emerald, and then in between, I did clear an emerald with a little tiny bit of the mint. Um, and then I followed that all the way back, incorporating, I kind of like to do things in like levels when I'm doing hair carving. Um, I decided to bring it back into the amethyst. Amethyst? I can never say that one. Um, but it's a beautiful color nonetheless um, and still sticking with like like the dual kind of um, shapes uh, and then I brought it back over to this side no carving on this side just using the accent amethyst <laughs> then what I did on the top I wanted to incorporate all the colors um, so if you want to see like from the top I decided like how am I gonna like make this have to do something with jewels. So what I did was I took diamond sections all the way throughout and did them all the different colors all the way up to the front. But on the sides I did do like kind of just painted that up. Does anybody have any questions about that? <laughs> so how did you, did you have to do a global pre-lightning or how did, did you prep her before the color application? I did. I, um, Erin is really light naturally, which is every you know hairdresser's dream. Um, but we've done a number of things on her, so her hair is a bit compromised. So I actually used um, the Pavana um, uh, Lightener with just a 10 volume and lifted her up, and she actually came up to, which I have found out, with Emerald, you can lift to a 9 with the uh, amethyst and the blue topaz, you can have to lift to about a 10. 
to get to get those results. Um, but she lifts like like a dream, like it was ridiculous. Um, and so I just basically was able to lift her, dry her, always on pure dry hair. When I first started doing um, uh, vivids, I would do them on wet hair because I found that it still worked. But then I also found that it faded a lot more quickly. So always on 100% dry hair. I never um, personally wash the hair after I do a visit. I find that there's so many conditioning agents in Pravana and um, Vivid Colors now that it's not like it used to be. I used to be so afraid of um, bleeding and uh, you know colors running into each other. Honestly, even with without using a locked-in color at this point, I'm like, no problem. I, I'll do an entire rainbow hair to here, all different color, color melts, and I will never think twice about it as long as I'm using cold water. Um, I send them home with the Color Protect shampoo and conditioner because that's basically what's going to keep the color in. Um, and like I said, always cold water. I live in Florida. Big, huge problem for my mermaids because um, they like to swim in the ocean. <laughs> uh, so I have to always kind of educate them about the sun and what they're doing with their hair, you know, when they're out there. You're paying a lot of money. These, these types of things take a lot of time. And a lot of stylists, I think, who don't dabble in vivids don't really understand what goes into it. I mean, it could be eight, nine, ten. I mean, I've heard people say it took them three days to do one single vivid, you know, to do color removal and that kind of thing. Um, so people are paying a lot of really good money for this stuff, and they want to know how to keep these colors. So, like I said, using the Color Protect shampoo is important. Shampoo your hair as least as amount as possible. I know as hairdressers that are probably mostly hairdressers watching, um, we wash our hair like never. Um, <laughs> we're like, you know, two weeks of dry shampoo, like trying to like get going through. <laughs> but um, for your regular everyday client, they might be going to the gym, they might, you know, be doing all these things where they have to wash their hair. So if they do, cold water and the color protect shampoo and conditioner. So that's my advice on that. When you mentioned that she's already somewhat compromised because you do a lot of fun work on her. Yes. so. If you have a client that comes to your salon and says, I want to be a vivid client, I want to be a mermaid, and they have compromised hair, what is the expectation level of the durability of that color, and how do you address that with them? What is okay. it, what's the process? Um, I've learned in the past maybe year and a half, like, i got to get real with my clients, and I think this is a really important lesson, especially for new stylists. Don't say yes just because you're afraid to say no. There's so much stuff on the internet right now that people are looking at, and if they are not a candidate for that color, you have to be honest with them. Don't tell them yes and then charge them a ton of money and send them out the door with something that they don't want because guess what? You've just wasted a lot of your time because they're probably going to call and want their money back. Um, you have to give them realistic expectations. Um, what I'll do is if I know that someone, you know, someone comes in with level five that they've been doing box color on and then they social me you know, this beautiful pastel, light, violet, silver hair, I'm like, first I'm like, <laughs> then I'm like, okay, I've got to, like, get real with this person. And, like, maybe there's other options. Like, I'll say, well, what if we do a darker purple? What if we do, um, you know, a, a, a blue and a purple or something? Give them options um, because they still may want to be vivid, and they might not like what you want to have to say. And... I would rather have my guest, I would rather not do it at all and not make the money than have somebody walking around with hair that's like half attached to their head because I tried to over process them to give them what they want when I knew in my heart that it was not achievable. So that's my advice for um, things like that. There are certain situations I think where if people are willing to compromise um, uh, with you. Uh, like I have, I've had guests that have hair down to here that, you know, this much of it is not workable and the rest is, and they're willing to cut it just to have that color. So, it's all about your consultation. I also never, ever, ever do a vivid without having a consultation first. I will not book a, cons a, book a vivid without having them come in. 
they don't want to give them a sticker shock because that's what was happening to me when I first started doing vivids. You know, no one was really like used to it, so they didn't know what to charge. But yet, I'm spending eight hours of my day when I could be, I'm usually fully booked, so I could be making all this money, so I've got to charge accordingly to spending time eight hours with one single person. So, um, I think, you know, sticker shock, you want to make them aware right up from the bat, you know, how much is this going to cost. Um, second, you know, you'll be integrity of their hair. You don't want them coming in and then they're totally bummed the day of, like, oh my god, I can't have pastel and pink hair because, you know, I'm a level of one, you know? And so, um, you have to be honest with them uh, about, like, the integrity and the price and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, for me, consultation is key. And, like I said, now, I, I won't even do phone con consultations anymore. Um, sometimes I'll do it with a kick if I think they're being honest. Um, so I, uh, I'll do it with a pick if they're far away. Like if I know that they can't come in and, and I'll see them immediately. We've got a couple questions. Uh, okay. Anastasia wants to know, do you have any tips or tricks for applying? And what are your favorite color formulas to use? Okay, is that Anastasia Lois? Yes, it is. I love you, Anastasia Lois. <laughs> so I do have, um, if you're talking about for stuff like this, um, I love my, my letter. Of course. Okay. From our, <laughs> from our, I love you guys. From our boys are at, they took me out to dinner the other night, so I have to put them on even more. But from our brushes, the um, bent ones, for doing stuff like this, I was actually an art student in, at art college before I went to hair school. So for me, this is like painting, you know, a, a canvas. So for me, I can get in and I can actually like angle the brush. And for some reason, the, whatever the genius of these lovely hot men decided <laughs> to make these out of, I mean, it's just the perfect texture. It's just hard enough and just soft, soft enough that you can get in there and get full coverage. You know, you can get to the root, um, but not like oversaturate. They've got a bunch of different um, types. Like say, for up in this area, I might use something like this or something like, like this um, to, to go back in. I think I did a little more on this side. Where those I went are back the, in with like the blue. These are all from our. And the AccuSoft, um, correct? I'm sorry? The AccuSoft crystals. Yes. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Did Anastasia say that? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, thanks anyway. <laughs> um, love, 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 love. I don't think I could work without these. I actually tried using a paintbrush, like from Michaels or something like that, because I thought, oh, that would really like get in there. But the bristles are too soft. They're just not, and they're not the right angle. So this for me has been like, it, like I said, you can just like totally get in there and really like get those vivids applied perfectly. And like I said, blending the colors, like even here, so that it's like a little bit more of a graduation between the vivids, I'll start, you know, I started with the light, moved into the dark, I brought some of this green into the blue, so that it's a little bit more of a transition, not just like blue-green. I don't know if you guys can see that. And I bedazzled her today. Because why not? Because why not? <laughs> because glitter is good and sparkles are fun. Sam, and how do you charge for your vivids? Okay, so I charge between $100 and $150 an hour, depending on what I'm doing. Um, a lot of times, I live in Florida, <laughs> which there's not a lot of um, people here, so a lot of times I do need the picture. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes the old chicks that they want to rock that, that rainbow hair, but um, a lot of times it's hard for me to find people. Um, a lot of people do find me, um, which is great, but a lot of times I have to like kind of put myself out there. You want to contact if you're really trying to build a vivid business. Um, you want to like go to your local tattoo people, go to your local piercers, go to your local um, art schools, like things like that. Offer like a little bit of a discount um, because once their friends see it, 
they're going to want it. It's kind of, I kind of put it in the same perspective as like, even if somebody says they have no money, they're dead broke, like a 20 year old, and they want a tattoo, they will find a way to get that tattoo. And I feel like it's becoming the same way with vivid hairstyles. Um, they will find the money to have that hair, to have that rainbow look. Um, so don't, I'm going to say don't um, underestimate what an 18 year old is capable of. I mean, mommy and daddy were the band for it, which is even better. Um, I had something wonderful happen to me a couple weeks ago. I did a 16 year old girl and I felt so bad, like I, I, I chickened out and I I lowballed like the price and I actually got a check in the mail from her mother a couple weeks later for a few hundred more dollars saying, you know, you shouldn't do that. And her hair is beautiful. I've never seen her so happy. And you know, you're worth what you charge. Or you should charge what you're worth, which is so key. So charge what you're worth. Um, this work is not easy. You guys know as vivid artists, this is not easy stuff. And I've also found recently that there's, there's such an overload of it out there. Like when I first started, it was like, oh my God, all I do is like put like a little purple and blue and think people go crazy. There's so many techniques. There's people like innovating so much stuff that it's like, what is next? Like, what can I think of? Like it's sometimes it's, I just lay up at night, like what can I do that's gonna like, you know, be the next big thing. So um, like, I, like I just said, charge what you're worth because this is not easy work. If it was, everyone would be doing it, and the people that are putting it down, don't so. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've changed Aaron's hair a bunch of times. Yes. What are your tips for removing vivids, safely keeping the integrity of the hair? Okay, so here is my Pravana way of removing hair, co um, hair color. Uh, so you want to use a detox shampoo. A lot of times what I'm finding is that the colors are staying so well these days. Like it used to be like you put them in and they come right out, especially like with pastels. But the colors are so good now that they come back and if they want something different, I'm kind of like, excuse my language, but sh and like it didn't fade enough, you know? So I've got a, I don't like to like bleach out the whole head every single time. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use the detox shampoo. Um, use uh, what's the name of the lightener? Pure light power I, lightener. I, the pure light power lightener. I, I know I use the stuff, but I never like know the names of them. But <laughs> the pure light power lightener um, with zero lift and only for about five minutes. Um, what happens is a lot of times is if you leave it on longer, you're actually driving the color molecules into the hair further. So that's not what we want. <laughs> um, I have, you know, on occasion, sometimes you do have to go back in and like re-lighten the hair just to like get that out. I know you guys probably are all well know the seafoam green that everything turns like at some point. But um, yeah, I have found that that formulation works for me the best. And if you know that a client is coming in weeks prior and that they want a complete change, I tell them. Start using the detox, start using Clarifies, like get that color as much out of your hair as you can so that you don't have to go back in and use so much lightener on your hair. Um, luckily with Erin, she's so short, I mean, it's not like this is getting damaged, you know what I mean? But we, it was funny the other day, you know, we knew we were going to cut this so I did lighten her top and it was like, <laughs> it was like Christmas in June. Like it was just like whoosh, like hair flying everywhere, but I was, it was kind of funny because we knew what, what, what we were getting ourselves into. But like I said, if you know that they're coming in ahead of time, have them prep their hair, you know, do treatments, but also have them do their detox and their clarifies. You want to get them ready for what you know you're, you're going to do next. Rose gold. You know, we get the question all the time. It's like the, the million dollar question of the day. What is the best rose gold yeah, formula? Okay, so I find the best rose gold formula is two cute coral with just a dab of magenta and then if you and clear, if you want to put some clear in there. 
Um, and if you want to intensify, you're going to use um, orange or yellow vivid um, to intensify that color. But that's what I found is the most beautiful um, uh, rose gold combination. I know it's it's always a struggle with that one, um, but that one for me has worked really, really, really well, really well. Um, also, just a little bit like of a side note, not so much like a vivid type thing, but with like the hair carving and stuff, um, I just wanted to give you guys like a few little tips that I have helped me. What When I lighten the hair, what I do is I use this. People have asked me this a million times because I did this at Butterfly Circus and then everyone was like, oh, what's the name of that? And I'm like, I don't know. So it's called Expo Bright Sticks, and it's a fluorescent wet erase. What I do is I will actually bleach their hair out first, and then I'll draw my design on. So that way I can go in, and I'll either use an edger, like just to go in and make those lines really, really, really tight. Um, and I know a lot of you have probably had issues with like, oh god, you know, her hair is growing in the wrong way. Um, I believe they sell this at Salon Center. I'm hoping that they do. But this is the wall tattoo. And people have asked me a million times about this too. You can see it has a, it's green from her hair, but <laughs> um, it has a teeny tiny blade. So if there's anything that you need to get into, like, you can literally just follow your lines. So it's basically like you're drawing onto the canvas and then carving onto the canvas. What I'm working on now at the barber is not having to do that, but for me, learning and, you know, just kind of steadying my hand and being able to do it with one hand now instead of two has been like a big deal for me. Um, if you're going to do um, vivids with, uh, with uh, pictures for Instagram and this is a great tool for me. This is um, the Wonder Pencil by NYX, and what I do is I go in, and in between, I just kind of whiten those areas, so that in the picture, like if you go on my Instagram, you can see the Vivid actually will pop out more. Especially in Florida, because usually nine times out of 10, if their hair is this short, their scalp is like red or tan, <laughs> so it's like you want it to pop out a little bit more. So just like a quick little hair carving tip, I find that it makes the vivids really pop in, in your Instagram pictures. Um, and I think that's pretty much... I have a couple questions for you, I know you've got some coming in as yeah. well. So obviously you've built quite a reputation on social media using vivid colors, yes. you know. What has kept you, you, you've mentioned you've been working with Pravana Colors for a number of years, yes. and we love you for that. Thank you. What's kept you going? What What is it about Pravana? What are the attributes? Because there's lots of other options on the market. What are some of the better options that, that Pravana provides to our vivid shades? Well, first off, the span of color, I think. Um, you know, between the pastels to the, oh my god, neons. <laughs> Neon green, like, I know it's everybody's favorite. Don't even lie. It, 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 <laughs> we actually we had a couple questions about your neon tips because you were fabulous with them. So if you have neon neon tips, especially for how to lighten and get there. Uh, lighten, 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 <laughs> lighten, 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 lighten. Um, actually, um, with neons, sometimes I find that I don't have to lighten to like a white or anything like that. Like sometimes with, you know, a, a, a neon yellow or a neon green, a little bit of that yellow actually kind of like pushes it a little bit, I find, and like makes it even, even brighter. Um, I'm like, I'm a neon freak because like, like I said, I know the pastels are like it and I've dabbled and I've tried and I love them. I think they're beautiful. I really, really, really do. But when I see something like like that like a hair god Zito does or something, like you know, he's like the same way that I am like he just wants everything to be like bam rainbow in your face. So um, I would I, the neons in the Pravana are definitely my favorite line. Um, I love the pastels for people who are non-committal because you'll get those people who are like I really want to do something to my hair, but I just don't know what. Blah, blah, blah. And so 
So with the pastels, I'm like, you can pretty much guarantee you wash, you wash that every day. You're going to get some fading. You know, it's not going to be forever. It's very light. It's very subtle. Um, also, uh, another tip that I wanted to share was um, I, I go out and I buy wefts of extension hair. And I practice on them. Like, I cut it up. I sew the clips to it. And I practice. I mix colors. I do color melting on them. I I practice it. I like want to learn my craft. I want to see what what does the, what's this and this gonna do. And a lot of times I, I have to use real life, you know, human hair. It's expensive. So what I do also for my clients, like I said, I have a lot of older clientele too. That it's always like, oh, oh I see your Instagram, or if I'm if I have vivid hair at the time, they're like, I wish I could do that. So what I do is I make my money back and I sell the pieces <laughs> on the clips and they're like, oh, I have a piece of teal, you know, and I can kind of wear it whenever I want. So I get my practice and I make my money back. So I think that's that's kind of a good tip for like how to sort of use it to your own advantage without like putting out a lot of money. I think what, the one last question for me, unless you've got some other ones. Um, Social media. Yeah. So, you know, I've had the pleasure of watching you over the past year, and your viewership and your follow rate has been just climbing and climbing, and your work is incredible, obviously. Thank you. Can you give any tips for those people? Because the big question mark is, is how do I tackle social media? How do I get my stuff out there? And with all the other people kind of competing in that same realm, what are your tips and tricks? And what do you, what's your recommendation on someone who's trying to, like, start from the beginning to build a social media platform? Well? Okay. It is a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it is almost my second full-time job. Um, it, it's, it's constantly trying to find those people. Um, in the beginning, I, um, you know, you didn't, I didn't really have a reputation as a vivid artist, so the people weren't hooking as it, so I had to go out and find them. And what I want to say is, the picture sometimes is not going to come to you. Sometimes you have to go get the picture. So put out a model call on your Facebook or your Instagram. Especially have your tattoo artist and piercing and um, uh, art student friends share that post because you will be flooded with people who want to have their picture taken. Um, pick somebody who you think is going to be good in front of the camera. Um, what I like to do is like if I have them come in for consultation, if they're going to be a model, like on my day off, I have them come in, I take a picture, a couple pictures of them with just my um, regular phone, just to see if they're photogenic. Um, and then I see, I, I don't give them really a choice if it's free. Um, but in the beginning, I did a lot of free work because I just wanted the pictures. And that's when one of my pictures went viral and then like it went on Cosmo.com, it went on Glamour.com, it was like on Hello Google, like it went all over the place and I got like the bug. You know, I was like, I see what's, I see how this can happen. And you know, I got into this business 17 years ago. 17 years ago, this was not possible. The world could not see your work. It was in your chair and then it walked out the door and the people in your neighborhood saw it. So now it's like I can just hashtag Carvana, hashtag salon centric, or at them, or tag them, and they can see it. And that's how this happened. And that's how everything that has happened for me in the past year has happened. And I just think it is an amazing platform for people who do want to get their work noticed and for people who, just, who should get their work noticed. People who are working in small towns that have good talent, I mean, this is, this is your chance. I mean, Good for you for me for coming up in this like era because it was really hard for me, um, at, you know, after 17 years to be able to go to Hollywood and be a butterfly circus and all these like opportunities that are being come, um, given to me. Um, I, I owe it all to social media. So, that's why are there any other questions from that? Uh, there is one last question um, suggestions for lifting and prepping the hair, getting it to those high levels. Okay, um, like I said. You want to be honest, <laughs> and you want to be um, conscious of. Uh, you want to keep the integrity of your client's hair. I think that's the number one thing, and I think that's where vivids are getting a bad reputation. Is because everyone thinks, oh, 
we gotta come back in, we gotta bleach the hair again. Oh, I'm here to come again, we gotta bleach the hair again. Um, you wanna, you know, take somebody to a place that their hair can handle. You don't want to promise someone, you know, silver hair if they're a level five with box color on their hair. You want to um, give them what is right for them. Um, but as far as like if like Erin actually in a few weeks she when she fades she's so light naturally that I could take her to a white violet, um, but to prep her I would do um, treatments on her I would have her you know, to have like a take home of um, the, the intense therapy like things like that are gonna like you know help prep her hair for what's um, I've also learned, this is a tip I learned from Hair Guides, you know, better to use a low volume and let it sit than a high volume just to get the job done. Um, I've been using seven volume on pretty much everyone to lift their hair, um, which is like, to me, at first, like, I was just 40 voluming everybody, like, oh, let's just get it white, get it white. And I've noticed that when you use the lower volume, yes, it takes longer, but it's also like kind of like helping um, not to pull those um, underlying pigments out like so quickly. Like um, it's not leaving, it's leaving the hair very even, very healthy. Um, I just think patience is the way to go, and you've got to get your client to be patient as well. Let them know this is a journey. This is like something, you know, if they come in with black hair and they want rainbow hair, this is a journey. Everyone's seen that Chloe Kardashian, you know, thing. I've seen it like six times this week because people want this white hair. And I'm like, see this? This is how many visits it's going to take. And let them know price-wise. And I know, I know a lot of people are afraid to say no and they're afraid to see somebody walk out the door and not, and not be paid. Um, it, the right person will walk in. Trust me, don't sacrifice your reputation as a hairstylist just to make that money that day. You want to do your best work and you want to be honest. And like I said, try to, you know, show, there's so many pictures you can just, you know, pull up on the internet like so quickly. Show them other options that, you know, they might be like, oh, yeah, that, that would be great for me too. So there's always, there's always kind of a way to work it out, even if it's not what they initially wanted. Awesome, I think that's our time for the sign All right. Yeah. All right, guys, I want to thank Provana and Salon Centric. This is so awesome and such an honor. And thank you to the Punk Pixie Chick. Thanks Follow her on Instagram. And thanks to Jen with other effects for <laughs> being my moderator today. And thanks to Michelle for being here. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.